Welcome to Soul Lab, a Christian-based podcast utilizing logic, history, science, and scripture to better understand the Christian faith. And now your hosts, Delaney and AJ. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Soul Lab. And I am blessed to be here today with the amazing Delaney. And I am your co-host, AJ. We have a cool topic today. We're going to talk a little bit about the stars and where we find stars in scripture and a really, really interesting theory that we heard recently. Yeah, I think that'll actually be most of our episode is this theory. And he says, we, I have not heard this theory. It's in the AJ's. Well, you heard it like right after I did. I literally, I think I saw some video on it real quick. Some super short video where this guy just kind of like grazes over the idea. And immediately I was like, have you seen this? You were like, no. I was like, well, I haven't seen this either, but it's yeah. really interesting. I have not seen it. And so I'll be very interested yeah. to hear about it. Yeah. It definitely took a lot of research to to get the details that we have on it. But it's really cool. Yeah. And I'm hoping it's true. Anyways. Yeah. Let's jump right into it. So cool. let's talk about the stars. Yeah. So the stars are super interesting. I think you found some areas in scripture in which we found stars. I did actually. So where do you think the stars are first mentioned? So I was doing some research a little bit before the birth of Christ in Greek, I think mythology, talks about astrology mm. and a little bit about the history there. And that's where a lot of the, the zodiac culture and symbols come from is that astrology. So I can tell you the oldest reputable mention that I could find was actually the Dead Sea Scrolls. Mm-hmm. One of the oldest documents that mentioned stars is actually what we call the Book of Genesis. Right. The book where God told Moses, hey, write this. And the oldest record we have of that is the Dead Sea Scrolls, wow. where they found these ancient documents still preserved. It's Genesis, very first chapter, Genesis 1, 16. And God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day, the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. Mm. So it's the creation story where it's mentioned. Isn't that the fourth day, right? I think it's it was the fourth day. Thank you. I'd Very good job. love to take credit for that, but I Googled it before I came in. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but you have Genesis 116, the story of creation, day four, God mentions the stars being there, being created. And then what's really interesting for constellation, one of the, I think it is the oldest I could find, the oldest reference of constellation, so not just stars, hmm. but the groups, which we call constellations, is mentioned in the book of Job. Completely forgot that there's a point where God is specifically trying to highlight his power and authority as God to Job. And he specifically names out the constellations. Actually, I'm just going to read it real quick. So this is God talking to Job. It says, can you bind the chains of Platus? I don't know how you say it. Platus? It's a star. Ooh. Or loose the cords of Orion. Orion Orion's belt. belt. Can you lead forth the Maseroth, a star, in their season? Can you guide the bear with its children, referencing a constellation? And it's, it's just interesting that we see these names for these yeah. constellations so in such an old document, such old scripture. So yeah, so that's the, the earliest I could find a reference. I am having major regrets because when you said Orion's Belt, I had this memory of a theory about Orion's Belt in the end of times. Oh, interesting. And yeah. there's a lot of talk about that in different religions. And yeah. there's also a theory in worldly cultures. And so I really want to do a part two episode. I, I think it'd be really cool. That. I definitely want to do a season on revelations yeah. and the end of times that could be easily like 15 episodes. My gosh, it's, there's so much there. That's pretty much all I had for general oh, wow. star conversation. Uh, oh, general. I was like, oh, so that's a short episode. Yeah, that's <laughs> everything. <laughs> no, Orion's Belt, a lot of different religions talk about Orion's Belt specifically. Mm-hmm. And I don't like Adventists believe that Christ is going to come to the center of Orion's Belt. Seventh day Adventists believe yeah. that. And there's another theorist that I'm going to delve into in a whole other episode. I cannot believe I forgot until you said that just now. I heard three or four years ago that it was a really interesting theory about how everything pivots on Orion's belt. It's like the center of the universe. The secret of the universe is in his belt, but he's there. Yeah. You had an interesting theory, did you not? Well, it started with the, this idea of stars making sound waves and okay. telling some sort of story. And then oh. I found out that's actually the end of the theory. And so I delved oh. deeper into that and I found okay. the beginning of the theory. So, start with the beginning because I'm already intrigued. Yeah, it is really cool. So the theory is called the gospel in the stars. Okay. Theory. Yeah. So the theory is it was first proposed by a Lutheran preacher okay. in the 19th century. I think it was like 1815 or something like that. Okay. Uh, his name was Joseph Sace. And the idea is that God early on, this is Old Testament. Uh, this is whenever Adam 
and Eve were alive, right? This is pre-flood. That God used the stars and the constellations to go ahead and tell his story of redemption, his story of the gospel. Like the gospel of Christ? Yes. So pre-flood, prior to Christ, he's already talking about Christ's coming. Yes. Okay. The idea is that God created all these, he created the stars, the constellations, Adam was formed, Adam and Eve fell, sent into the world, and God used the stars and the constellation to go ahead and tell them, hey, here's my plan for redemption. Here's my plan to save all of humanity from sin. Like the rainbow, like a promise. Yes, it's okay. like a commitment or promise that he was making to them. Hey, I have a plan. Here's what we're going to do. So how did he right? tell us to start the stars, though? Really great question. Yeah. I want to start with the evidence of just some mentionings of the stars in Scripture. So we talked earlier about the first mentioning in Genesis 1, but also it says in Psalms 147. I'm, I'm going to read it because I think it's really cool. From the ESV. Always from the ESV. So this is Psalms 147, and... It's specifically speaking about the Lord. The Lord builds up Jerusalem. He gathers the outcasts of Israel. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. He determines the number of stars. He gives to all of them their names. Great is our Lord and abundant is his power. Speaking of stars, he also used stars to promise Abraham many descendants. Do you remember that? Oh, he used it as a reference, right? He said, yeah. you know, your descents will be as uh, numerous as the stars. He also used a yeah. star to lead people to Christ's birth. Oh, that's true. Yes, yeah, so it's yeah. interesting. He is sending messages through stars yeah. throughout the Bible. That is really interesting. So it's like we do have a history of God using the stars as tools yeah. for, for his use for Especially whatever purpose. if the Greeks used it as a timepiece, that's mm -hmm. interesting too. It is really interesting. It's not in the Bible, but it's still in history. Sure. So we have Genesis 1 where it's first mentioned. We have Psalms, which specifically says God named all the stars. I'm of the opinions. So we know in Genesis, when Adam is alive, Adam with God names all the animals, right? I like to think that God allowed Adam to help him name the stars as well. So Genesis 1 is first mentioned. We know based on Psalms 147, God has named them all. And so I think there's intent and purpose there. Why would God name them all, right? And then we have in the book of Job, we find out not only did God name the stars, he named the constellations. God is speaking to Job, in the, the verse I referenced earlier, and telling him, he's, God is referencing Orion's belt. He's referencing stars and constellations. So obviously it's common knowledge, or Job would be like, what are you talking about? Do you think God named the constellations? Do you think humans did, and God is referencing humans' language? According to Psalms, God named them. He named the stars, he named the constellations. I think so. I think and so. I think, yeah, I think, I believe so. I believe God yeah, I named know. the stars. You think that God named the stars and humans named the constellations? Yeah, I think he, they named them like, Orion's belt. It looks like a man with a belt. But <laughs> maybe you'll prove me wrong. Could be. Yeah. Could be Adam named them with God whenever he was naming the animals. I mean, the, maybe yeah. the stars themselves, but like the constellations. Or the constellations. Yeah, maybe the constellations are... I don't know. I'm, you'll, maybe you'll convince me. I mean, I, it's one of those things where we have no evidence. If we're from a Christian perspective, we have to go with our gospel. We have to go with our, our book and trust that that's God's word. And so we can deduce based on that, that God knows every star. He names every star. And as for the constellations themselves, the group of stars, we know God's aware of the names and he uses the names because it's yeah. in scripture. Well, cause it, but did God name them or did humans. a human name them and God just yeah. runs with it? That's what I'm wondering. Like, mm -hmm. you know what's interesting too? The Underground Railroad, what was her name? Harriet Tubman. Harriet Tubman. Thank yeah. you. And they called her Moses, right? Because she was leading the people. Out that of, I haven't heard. Yeah, they called her, I preach they called her Moses because they were, she was leading people into safety through the Underground Railroad. They called her Moses because it like, parallels with Moses of the Bible. Something they would use a lot was the Big Dipper. I can't remember uh, how. Okay. I think it like they would follow it north, I think. It pointed some yeah, direction. But when she said when you were lost at night, if you don't know where to go, look for the Big Dipper and you know yeah, you would follow that. Gotcha. Which is interesting. That's also directional. So we have that history in scripture of, and I, the reason I say that's important is because it gives us evidence that God named the stars, either God or someone in the Old Testament named the constellations, but regardless, God agreed with the names and he used the names of the constellations. So the theory is this, the way that the stars are laid out, the forms that they take, the way that they're named, all seems too coincidental to not have been intentional, Right. which I'll get more to in a little bit. But it, the theory is that God actually used the stars and the constellations to tell the story of redemption, to tell the gospel all the way from the Virgin Mary 
to Christ defeating Satan. So I'm going to go through that one at a time, but here's like the order. And I'm just going to let you know, I have this for the show notes, but I found this guy who has this incredible video where he does what I'm about to do in like way more detail. He does an awesome job at it because I'm going to talk about the constellations, but he went into like the individual stars and their within names. Within the constellations? Within the constellations. Wow. And he explained how this constellation means this. And if you look at the star in the constellation, it represents this. He goes really deep. I'm going to do more of a high level because we don't have time for that. But I'm definitely putting it in the show notes. He did an awesome job. Is so, it like a YouTube video or podcast? Correct. Okay. Yeah, it's a YouTube video. It looked like an older one too. Oh. So we start with the constellation of Scorpio. A scorpion carries what in its body? Poison. Correct. Scorpio is supposed to represent Satan bringing oh. sin into the world. Causing human beings to sin, causing poison. Scorpio represents Satan and his lies, poisoning the world. And it represents the conflict that now man is going to have because of Satan's poisonous lies. So next we have Capricorn, which is half goat, half fish. So the top half is a goat, bottom half is a fish. That is supposed to represent the necessity for a sacrifice to redeem humans. The reason is because Jesus is both man and god so it's two halves right i don't know if that makes sense oh it does it's just a bizarre but well go on. so just so everybody knows i'm going really high level with this but he the guy in the video does an awesome job explain next we have virgo that one's simple you know virgo is virgin it's a virgin yeah. really it's a female virgin and obviously that represents the virgin Mary. yes okay <laughs> yeah so that's the third piece of the story and then we have sagittarius now, Sagittarius is a centaur, centaur with a bow. Oh. It has the bow drawn with an arrow in it, and it is aimed at something. Guess what it's aimed at? I thought this Cuban. was really cool. Poisonous scorpion. Yes. Oh, yeah, of course, good job. duh. Yeah. It's actually really interesting. Sagittarius is aiming its bow directly, not just at the scorpion. There's a star exactly where a heart on a scorpion would be that is in Scorpio. It's aimed right at the heart. It's really cool. It's a centaur. So it's half man, half horse. So once again, that represents Jesus, who is both God and man, and it's meant to represent the one who will defeat Satan. So Jesus is now twice. Is he's the ram thingy? Well, to clarify, um, Capricorn. That's what it is. Means represents an atonement that's needed for sin. Oh, okay. It does not necessarily Rep mean himself. Jesus. It just means the. But the there sacrifice. needs to be some sort of atonement. Gotcha. Yeah, some sort of okay. sacrifice. I but then you have Sagittarius, which is directly referencing Jesus. Okay. It's just saying, hey, this is the one who will defeat Satan. Okay. So there's the first four. And then we have Libra. Do you know what Libra is? Scales. Oh, yeah. I had yeah. no idea. I would have been here all night. So I would, I honestly, I wouldn't have got it either. So Libra is scales, and scales are used to weigh what? Scales weigh money, cost? cost. They weigh the cost. Libra represents the, the cost, cost that Jesus had to pay. Uh, yeah. So you can see a trend here, right? We started with Scorpio, which is Satan putting sin in the world. And then after that, Capricorn. Okay, now we need to some sort of atonement because of that. What's that atonement going to be? Virgo, Virgin Mary. She's going to have to bring someone in the world. Wait, is this going in order? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah, we're going in order. That's Got why you. I'm recapping. Got you. Okay. Virgin Mary, she's brought someone in the world. That person is now oh, shooting. She brought the, cap the centaur. Yes. Yeah, okay. So now we have the centaur, which yeah. is Jesus. Yeah. Aiming his bow at, the scorpion. at Scorpio. And then you got the next piece, which is he's aimed at his bow, but now the cost has to be paid, which is Libra. Right. So Jesus has to sacrifice himself. And then you have Aries, a ram, and that represents that a worthy sacrifice has been made. Okay. Okay. So, so we've got Scorpion, Satan, entering the world. Yep. Then we've got the half man, half fish, which is that something has to be paid. Yep. Something has to be paid. Then there's the Virgo, Virgin Mary. Yep. Okay. And she brings in the centaur, who yeah. is Christ. Yep. Christ shoots. Is aiming his bow at and hasn't shot. Aiming oh, his bow. aiming his bow at yeah. the scorpion's heart. Yes. Okay. Libra, which is the wages of sin. It's the scales, yeah. Scales, yes. It's the cost that has to be paid by Jesus. Which is, yes, the wages of yeah. sin is death. Okay, so then after that is... Aries. Aries. It's a ram. It's a ram, which is... It represents that the, the sacrifice that was made was acceptable. It was the right sacrifice. It, it was, was a worthy sacrifice. It was appropriate. Okay. It was appropriate sacrifice. So, yep. then we have the appropriate sacrifice. Okay. Yep. If you're just thinking chronologically, after Jesus died and the sacrifice was made, he yep. came back and then he left again. But what was the next big event that happened after Jesus left? It affected all the apostles. 
You had Pentecost. Okay. Pentecost is when the Holy Spirit came down and all the apostles spoke in tongues. After Aries, we have Aquarius. Okay. Aquarius. Yep. Aquarius. Aqua? You know Aquarius? It has to do with water. Aquarius is a water bearer pouring out his water. That's Aquarius. Mm. I don't know if you've the seen Holy it Holy Spirit? It's the Holy Spirit. It's, it's meant to represent Jesus has now left and the Holy Spirit gets poured out onto the world. Right? Mm. I thought that was really cool. And then next we have Pisces. It's two fish. Two fish. It's two fish. Two oh, different fish. Two different fish. And they're tied together by their tails. Interesting. It's meant to represent that now not just the Jewish church, but the Gentile church are now together in Christ. They're like both that. swimming together through life, trying to get closer to Christ, right? It's J the Jews and the Gentiles mixing together for the first time. Because what we see after Pentecost is the disciples go out and create the Gentile churches. So. Next we have Taurus. You know what Taurus is? Is it a bull? It's a bull. And it, a bull is always is meant to represent, even today, people could probably guess this, but back in Old Testament, a bull represented someone hard-headedly persevering forward. Oh, so not the animal so much as the meaning. The attitude of a bull. Oh, someone oh. who is hard-headed, determined, persevering forward, charging like forward. It. So that's meant to represent Jesus coming back to take his bride, the church. Jesus determined to one day come back and take back his people. Mm. Next, we have cancer. You know what that is? It's a crab. Cancer is a crab. Yeah. I don't understand the correlation. I'm sure it has huh. some sort of Latin root. A crab is viewed as having a really hard shell, being tough to crack. So cancer represents God gathering his people and sheltering them from the tribulation. So now we're getting into Revelations and the end of times. So it's meant to be God protecting his people during the tribulation. Interesting. So next we have Gemini. So keep in mind, we're in at this point in the chronological order of the stars of the constellations. We're in the like book of Revelations. And so Gemini is two twins side by side. And this is supposed to represent that during Christ's millennial reign, he is the judge. So that's when Christians believe that we will be judged. Uh, but also he's the ruler during the millennium kingdom, right? So it's, it's meant to represent cross, Christ's dual role there. And then we have the 12th, the very final one, Leo. It's a lion. A lion has always represented victory. So it's supposed to represent Christ's victory over Satan. Christ has officially defeated Satan. I thought that was really cool. The constellations seemed to all have a purpose or a meaning. And if you view it this way, the, there's an order to it. It seems to make sense. I just want to remind everybody, like this was a super high level, me just telling you, like me just telling you, hey, this is what the theory is. Please go watch the video. That guy does an awesome job explaining, hey, here's why we believe this represents this. He goes deep into each individual star in that constellation and explains more, hey, here's more evidence of why this makes sense. Nowadays, we have people divided into different signs. People know their sign from when they were born. They identify with that and they use that to, in many cases, navigate their life. Do you think that ties into the story at all? I'll tell you my opinion, and you, you may disagree with me. Uh, this is just my opinion. I firmly believe every single thing that God does, the devil perverts everything. I think we're aware of some of it. I don't think we're aware of the whole picture. One of the things I am, I feel very convicted that the devil perverted is the constellations. Why? The whole idea of the star signs, astrology is all about you trying to take control over your life. You trying to, that's what it's about. If you do this on this day, here's what's going to happen. That's what, that's what it is. It's you trying to be like, God, disagree. And that's fine. Uh, I don't, to be clear, I don't look into, I don't, I know my zodiac sign, I don't know anything about it though. Yeah. Like, I don't participate in that. I just don't know that it's necessarily that. Yeah. Um, Cause first off, I just want to say it's actually kind of hilarious. There's been so many people that have proven zodiac signs aren't accurate. It's not true. We, they're all general concepts that we all fall into. I can't tell you how many times someone said, oh, are you this? I'm like, yeah, you guessed it right. And they're like, oh, I knew. I'm like, you're not even close. Okay. I think you and I are talking about two different things. Like I wasn't saying so much so that we should be using our star signs to predict the future and figure out the future and figure out what your quirks are and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I was saying more, do we play a certain role in Christ's mission based on our zodiac sign? I wonder if Sagittarius specific mission be that they're aiming at Satan's heart. Maybe they're specifically drawn to go into evil situations to defeat evil. Mm -hmm. yeah. So my question is this. Your whole thought process is based on the idea that you're assuming we should put months to constellations. No, yeah. The scripture doesn't ever put months to constellations. Humans did that 
way after the fact. So why? Like, were they, like, was that a God because thing or not? I no? don't think it was. What was it? I think it's a Satan thing. Why? Because human beings wanted to have the power and authority to predict the future. That's where astrology comes from. Human beings said, let us study the stars In and the constellations. Greek, right? And let's try and use that to create our own path to predict the future, to become like God. So that's where astrology Greece, comes from. Right? I'd have to pull it. I, I saw it whenever it, I was researching. I did too. I think it was Babylon. The earliest reference I could find is that the Zodiac, the astrology Zodiac, was introduced between f around 400 BC, so before Christ, okay. during the Persian rule. That was a little off. Yeah. That's still a long time ago. I said 200, it's 400. Yeah. yeah. That's pretty close. Persian rule. Okay. Yeah. But the idea is that- Was it Babylon? Let me see. I'll Google it. Babylonians. Yes. I knew something from my research. Because yeah. yep. it's interesting, because wasn't Daniel in Babylon? So- Look, I'll just, I'll just tell you, I hate to sound like this sometimes, but there's some things I feel very convicted are of the devil. And I think God created the stars and the constellations for good intent and purposes. Humans came along and said, but we want to be like God. So let's try and use that to predict the future and guess as to the way in which we are created, what we're supposed to do. We don't find that ever, not one single time in scripture. And so I think that's all the evidence I need that's not of God. Well, that also plays into what I was researching earlier and talking about where the they were used as a timepiece to determine what the future would be and how to intercede. Yeah. 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 That's, that's just AJ's opinion that the Zodiac astrology, as we understand it, first off, I think it's crap. I don't think it's accurate. I also feel very convicted that it's of the devil. It's a perversion. I have one more really interesting layer to this theory. Okay. Right. So the theory of the gospel and the stars. The theory is this. God created man. Satan went to the garden. They're in the garden of Eden. Satan introduces sin with them into the world. And you have, we'd have to, we really should do an episode on this one day. But you have God who has now created the stars and the constellations. Based on this theory, they tell a story. And you still have at this time, this water vapor layer. Earth. So let me tell you something really interesting I just found out recently. Every single star, scientists can actually use this to get more data on stars. Every single star puts out sound waves. Did not know that until recently. Scientists use those sound waves to tell a lot of information about the stars. They can tell the size, the age, what type of chemicals is that star made out of, what proportion. And so the stars are putting off sound waves. We as human beings cannot hear these sound waves, okay? They're tuned to a frequency we cannot hear or ears can't pick up. Can right? animals' ears pick it up? Maybe. I don't know. But it's interesting, scientists agree, stars put out these sound waves, but they're tuned to frequency we can't currently hear or understand. It is believed, this is another level of theory, that water vapor layer that was around the earth acted like a radio. Those sound waves came in, the water vapor layer translated it into an audio frequency that humans could understand. So imagine it was like a filter, like a radio. So it goes hey. in. Oh, sorry. What evidence do they have that that could happen? Because I have never put water through, uh, sorry, sound through water and created audio. So have they done yeah. that? So the evidence is that if you can do it, there's really? evidence that you can take a certain, keep in mind the water vapor layer wasn't water vapor. It wasn't just water vapor. Right. It was other chemicals, yeah. other things. But yes, it's the idea that you actually can, if you tune it just right, you can shoot sound waves through an object or through a layer and create an audible sound on the other. Is that's it understandable. words or is it? That's the theory. So the theory is that you have this water vapor layer around the earth. The stars we know put off sound waves. We know that for sure. Sound waves would go through that layer and that humans would actually hear the gospel. So they have created nowadays words through a filter? Through the stars? No. I don't have any record of somebody trying to figure out how to create like a water layer and put sound waves through it. So the phrase, I guess it's the song, if the stars are made to worship, so will I, comes from Psalms 148, where it says, praise the Lord from the heavens, praise him in the heights, praise him, all his angels, praise him, all his hosts, praise him, sun and moon, praise him, all the shining stars, praise him, you highest heavens and the waters above the heavens and see, and the waters above the heavens, the water layer. It's another reference to it. So just to sum up, the final part of the theory is that that layer around the earth and that the, we know stars do put off sound waves. And the idea is that layer would transmit. act as a radio to transmit an audible message that could be heard and that it would actually transmit the gospel itself.
When you were a kid, did you ever listen to the audiobook Sully the Singing Songs book? Mm-mm. Okay. When I was a kid, I did. And in it, in one specific episode, in the distance, you could hear kids singing. It wasn't children. I mean, it was, mm. but like it was supposed to be people singing. And that's what I picture sounding like. I'm going to put that YouTube video in the show notes so yeah. other people can watch it. I'd be really curious if anyone listening knows more on this subject to leave us some comments with more details. If anyone has heard of someone taking some sort of like water layer, putting sound waves through it. Yeah. It's cause... really interesting to know if that happens. Yeah. Yeah. I'd be curious. I feel like, look, I could be wrong. I just feel like somebody somewhere tested has tested okay, this. Okay. Well, let's just talk about it too. Sound does travel in water. This is going to make me sound so blonde. It does. Because what is it, orcas that can communicate through long, water, long distance? Yeah. Yeah. Through water. Yeah. Important part piece of that. Yeah. I don't know. It's interesting. You got me thinking now. Yeah. All right. And that concludes our episode. Stay tuned for an episode on Orion's belt because that will be happening soon. Yeah, apparently. That would be cool. And I can't believe uh, I didn't think about uh, that until the middle of our episode. I was like, yeah. oh, whole theory. We always think about more future episodes as we're talking. Yeah, definitely. Talk about Revelations and Orion's belt and, and whatever else you guys want to suggest. Just to wrap up today's topics and everything that we discussed. So we talked a little bit about the stars. And we talked about what is called the theory of the gospel and the stars. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that theory is that God created the stars and the constellations that man sinned because of that. God wanted to convey his story of his plan and that the 12 constellations I mentioned told that story in order, like how that represents God's story from sin entering the world to Jesus defeating Satan, which is really cool. I think it's really likely that's what it was. And then at the next level above that, which I think maybe not as likely, but it's really cool to think about, is that not only did God have that plan, those 12 constellations telling that whole story of redemption, but you also have this water layer on the earth that those constellations and the stars put off sound waves. And so not only did God use the constellations to tell the story that people that were alive pre-Noah had that water layer on the earth, they actually heard it. Not just it was there to remember, it was in the sky. They could actually hear it, hear the story. Do you think they heard it like a story like you just told? Do you think they heard it like in song? That's a really good question. So, yeah, I'm so curious. Certain star, or certain constellations aren't visible at certain times of year. Is that right? I don't know. I'm pretty sure you, you can't see them all, except for the North, not the North Star. That one star that everything pivots around. So I'll tell you the theory that you can audibly hear the story through yeah. the water vapor layer. Another part of that theory is that the reason that could work is because as the Earth rotates on its axis, we get further close to the constellations. So, you can so the idea is that story. wherever you are on the Earth, whatever you're closest to, is that's yeah. the part of the story you're going to hear. So, so that's, that's what good. my question was, too. Are certain constellations ever not visible in certain areas of the Earth? Yeah, interesting. The it would be interesting if they had to communicate to hear the whole story. <laughs> like different parts of people in the yeah. world had yeah. different parts of the story? Right. Right. Yeah. Huh. That makes sense when it says that the messages of Jesus Christ will be spread to every corner of the earth if it's told uh-huh. in more ways uh-huh. than just by mouth. Yeah. We think that we have to tell by mouth, but it can be told right. in other ways. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we appreciate you guys hanging out with us again. That concludes another episode of Soul Lab. It has been my pleasure to be your host, AJ. I'm Delaney. And Delaney. And as always, thank you guys. And if there's anything you guys want us to talk about, research, go over on this podcast, feel free to shoot us a message. Have a good night. Thank you for listening to another episode of Soul Lab with AJ and Delaney. You can find all materials referenced from today's episodes in the show notes. If you enjoyed today's episode, please like, comment, and subscribe. Check out our website for more episodes and stay tuned for the next release. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time.